Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quadratic equation. So we have z squared plus mz plus n, m and n are real numbers, and we're given that z sub 1 is 1 plus 3i. So one of the solutions to this quadratic equation is 1 plus 3i, m and n are real numbers, and we're going to solve for m and n. Okay? Let's see how we can do this in multiple ways. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going, going to do I'm going to do the following. Since we are given a solution to this equation, I'll just plug it in. Why not? Right? So let's replace z with 1 plus 3i, since that's a solution everywhere. So this gives us 1 plus 3i squared plus m times 1 plus 3i plus n equals 0. Okay, let's go ahead and expand and simplify this. 1 plus 6i plus 9i squared plus m plus 3mi plus n equals 0. Now notice that on the left hand side we have a complex number and on the right hand side we have 0 which is another complex number which can be written as 0 plus 0i. So the real part and the imaginary part are both 0. Let's go ahead and simplify the left hand side. 9i squared is negative 9. So from here we're going to get the following. We're going to get m plus n and then we have the 1 minus 9 which is minus 8 and then we have the 6i and the 3mi so that is 3m plus 6 multiplied by i and that's equal to 0 plus 0i which means that both the real part and the imaginary part is 0. Okay? So we get a system of equations, but guess what? The second equation is actually really easy to solve, so I don't think this could even qualify as a system, even though it's a system. M is so obvious, right? Hopefully. So from the second equation, we get M equals negative 2. That's awesome. And now we can go ahead and plug it into the first equation, which says M plus N equals 8. If M is equal to negative 2, N needs to be 10, to satisfy this equation, right? So, what does that mean? That means m equals negative 2 and n equals 10, and those are the only values that satisfy this equation. So, our solution in that sense is unique because we're looking for the ordered pair, maybe, m comma n, and there's a unique solution. So, we can write it as negative 2 comma 10, okay? So that's one way to look at it. Now, what is really cool about complex number equations is that you may have two variables, but you can solve them in one equation. Because actually, a complex equation sometimes is a system of equations. It's a single equation that contains many equations. So that they're very powerful. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at another method. So we have this equation, z squared, and let's call this second method, right? So we have z squared plus mz plus n. And we're given that one of the solutions, z sub 1, is what? I forgot. 1 plus 3i. Okay. 1 plus 3i is a solution. So here's what we're going to use. Vieta's formulas. And they're very helpful. What does Vieta say? Well, Vieta's formulas say that if you have a quadratic equation, the sum of the roots is negative b over a and the product is c over a. But of course, in this case, we're talking about a z squared plus b z plus c equals 0 as the coefficients. So in this case, uh, m is b, so it's going to be, and a is 1, so it's going to be negative m. And c is the constant, which is n, okay? Because a is 1, again, coefficient of z squared. So how does this help us? So here's the thing. If m and n are real numbers, that means the sum of these two roots and the product is real. Now think about, go back to lecture videos and think about when is the product of two complex numbers a real number? At least we know one of the cases, right? It's not unique, but if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you get a real number, the sum of two squares. But when you add them, you still get a co complex, you still get a real number, they are definitely conjugates. Because think about it. Like if you have something like 3 plus 4i and 3 minus 4i, 
their product is real, their sum is real. But if you have 3 plus 4i and 6 minus 8i, their product is still going to be real, but their sum is not going to be real because the imaginary parts are not going to cancel out. Make sense? So that's an important distinction I wanted to make. And the result is that if 1 plus 3i is a solution, then 1 minus 3i must be the other solution. Make sense? And again, we're not going to plug this in. I mean, you could, but that's the first method. That's kind of old school, right? So we're going to do the following. Use Vieta's formulas. Since we know both roots, z sub 1 plus z sub 2 from here is going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2. And their product from sum of two squares is just going to be 1 plus 9, which is 10. So what? I got m and n directly because negative m is 2 and n is 10. That's it. Easy, right? Okay. That's why it's the second method. First method is a little complicated or more uh, brute forcey. So from here, m equals negative 2, n equals 10. And is that the same thing that we found before? Yes. So those are the values. Let's go ahead and take a look at another method, see if that's going to work. I don't even know if it's going to work. I'm just going to test it out. Let's explore. So we have z squared plus mz plus n equals 0. And then we know that z sub 1 is 1 plus 3i. Was that the, one of the solutions? I think so. Now, what can I do with this? I could probably do the following since... Um, I, I'm given a quadratic, I can solve it. How do you solve a quadratic equation? There is multiple ways. This is not factorable easily, at least. But I can use the quadratic formula or complete the square. Hmm. I'm not sure if m is an even number, so it's better to use the quadratic formula. Let's use the quadratic formula on this one. So z can be written as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is m squared, minus 4az, which is 4ab, I mean. 4n, right? Divided by 2. Now, one of these solutions is supposed to equal 1 plus 3i. Which one do you think it is? Probably the one with the plus sign. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 1 plus 3i. Let's multiply by 2, cross multiplication. Negative m plus the square root of m squared minus 4n is equal to 2 plus 6i. Now, think about it for a minute. M is a real number, so it has to equal a real part. So M or negative M is equal to 2, which means M is negative 2. Right? That's easy and straightforward. And the radical expression is supposed to equal 6i because the only way to get an i is by taking the square root of a negative number. Correct? So this needs to be what? Square root of M squared minus 4n is 6i. If you square both sides... Hopefully, you'll get an answer. Even if you use the negative 6i, you will still get the same thing. It's going to be negative 36. And I know that m is equal to negative 2. So this is 4 minus 4n equals negative 36. And mathematics happens at 36. You get 4n equals 40 and n equals 10 as before. Make sense? Great. And this also explains why the solutions are conjugates because of the plus minus signs. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.